Sam. You found another survivor from a ship. I know. And and as far what as that was concerned, from, everyone man. that she has met from that ship cruise have all died and ran off. Yeah. Well. And was used for bait by hell. Yeah, it seems like she had run into the same damn bike gang also. Man, hell's hell's been a jerk to a lot of people, Sam. <laughs> Yeah, they are the resident bullies. Yeah, so as you guys are, you know, having some small chat and, uh, you know, asking Steve of, hey, can can you can you get this down for us? You know, because you know, Rose being you know kind of like a a small woman, Sam being short, you know, Steve's the big burly guy. Yeah, can you can you get that down for me? Can you lift this for me? Can you get that? So Steve's doing all this, you know, working as the as you know the kid and and Rose are chatting, and and you guys actually find a uh, a pretty good sort of like these plastic totes, these green plastic totes, and inside these green plastic totes there are a lot of cases of of like uh, ointments and jellies and. And as you guys start to work your way back, you can start to see that there's more, you know, band-aids of different sizes. You can see that there's, you know, toothpaste, toothbrushes, pretty much where all of the, you know, on one side of this, of this aisle, this massive aisle, there's all this health and beauty aid stuff, you know, shampoos, soaps, all that stuff by the case, not, you know, lined up like in a grocery store, but cases of this stuff. And then on the right, there's uh, just a ton of, like, bare aspirin, you know, stuff like x lax I mean, everything that you would find in a grocery store. And yes, Sam, even the little, even the little tubes of the 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 toenail fungus cream. You, you can even <laughs> find that stuff. You find as long as everything. I never have to see those commercials again. <laughs> oh yeah, those are oh. pretty crazy. But you find you find everything. I mean, you find everything. Vicks vapor rub, anything that's in a grocery store that doesn't need a prescription you can find it here and there are just uh, there's there's a lot of it all right Dave what I'm gonna do is um, I want to start making like a medical kits for each of us sure so I can guess uh, I guess we can say we all have a medical kit yeah with uh, alcohol bandages uh, some pills and those sorts of things that we'll need yeah, yeah absolutely heck yeah and and in fact uh, we'll even go beyond that and say that they do have those those little you know little medical boxes with the big you know cross on it and you know basic garbage and stuff is in there but uh yeah you can fill those right. boxes up with you know a real first aid kit and there's all kinds of like ace i mean there's literally everything cases of ace bandages large bandages small bandages everything You know, plus there's you know tons of canned goods on the on the first uh, level, tons of paper products, all of that cereals. Um, I'm gonna do, do those, and I'm gonna also see if we find any like energy bars. That's the most amount of calories packed into the smallest tight spot, so we'll get a lot of those to keep with us. Okay, yeah, you packs. can find those down there on the on the first floor. Plus, the you know the plus there's all kinds of those those breakfast bars too. But I know the the bars that you're talking about. Plus, there's like cans of Insure. There's everything there that you that you want. You even want to take Insure, take the Insure with you if you want. <laughs> Yeah, there's probably enough supplies here we could live for months, but years, I, I, I years. Don't suspect that we would be here long. Zombie invasions are right around the corner, so I want to be prepared to move out. Absolutely, because you know how I roll, Sam. You know how I roll. Something no, like this is is just <laughs> too good to be true. <laughs> oh, that's true too. Yeah. What's hey, up, Dave, Warren? is there a uh, section for like um? You know how all the grocery stores have that one little miscellaneous hardware aisle? You know, oh, yeah. it's got like little light bulbs and... Rambo survival yeah, knives you and know, shit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> stuff, stuff for your car, you yeah. know. Yeah. Um, I'd like to see if there's a section like that and maybe get some uh, flashlights and batteries. Um, sure thing, yeah. You know, yeah, stuff you like that kind of... Tons of stuff like that, yeah. Scissors, you, can, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. Now, when you guys start adding that stuff on there... Take into consideration, 
your encumbrance especially when you start packing a a bunch of batteries and stuff batteries are not life they're they're not light but uh, they are pretty heavy but you can find you know plenty of these uh flashlights you can you can find uh little tool kits all that stuff yeah you find find everything not you know it's not craftsmen or anything but it's you know this is cheesy little made in Afghanistan tool sets that are like made out of like aluminum. Use a wrench once and it like breaks. <laughs> yeah, just like Lynx's home pregnancy test. I mean, there's there's everything. Well, that should come in handy. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it did in The Walking Dead. I mean, jeez. <laughs> no, we can make sure we don't have more no zombie babies. Yeah. yeah. So, Miss Rose, did I hear you say you had some sort of medical uh, experience? Yes, and until I was about 50, I, I was a veterinarian. Well, we have a little girl with us that's been ill and we've checked her over she doesn't seem to have been bitten but we can't really figure out what's wrong with her do you think you might take a look and see if uh, you can figure out what's wrong maybe some of these supplies will be able to help her out yeah I, I can see what I can do I mean of nice. course yeah, I can't guarantee anything I, I worked on uh, you know animals so a little different yeah it never hurts to check though But, you know, um, I've been hearing all around her. Is it, you know, th th that there was a little girl that may have been bit? Yeah, know, she, the she's same girl. But. We've got her down in the uh, little office section down on the first floor. Okay, well, you know, let's get these uh, supplies ready to take downstairs, and then I'll, I'll go have a look at her. All right, thank you. Mm hmm So you know, we're 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 sure though that you know she she hasn't been bitten. Just so I know. Well, we had a couple of the ladies that were with us before. They did a pretty thorough investigation, and they didn't see any scratches or anything like that. Okay. I mean, you know, just just want to be on the safe side here. You know, I gotta. You never know. At this point, I'm. I'm I wouldn't be surprised if a hangnail. Mm. So, man, Rose actually brought the sick girl up to you. Man, that's uh, rumors flying around the warehouse already. Oh boy, here we go. So you guys find, you know, whatever, whatever you guys want to put in your. Uh, your medical kits. You guys, seriously, put it in there. Ask for yep. an ace bandage, whatever. Just, I'll, I'll uh, adjust the weights later on. Whatever I think is. So just add it to our, uh, the inventory tab. Sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. Where do I? Where do I add? Uh, uh, on your, your right inventory. Click. Right click. Yep. Add item. You can hit add item, or uh, if there's something in the the player's handbook, you can also drag and drop it down, and it'll carry all. And the that just goes under, just under mundane items. Is that where it goes? E yes, I believe so. Under inventory. <clears throat> right. So do we need to specify what's in the medical kit or just, like, the medical kit? Uh, we'll say you pretty much have a, a little bit of everything. We'll say that each one of those medical kits are probably, I would say, about little little sand packed and pretty tight. So I will say that there's, like, three, four pounds worth of stuff in each one. So we'll put four pounds on each one. But it has, I mean, it has an array of everything. So when you say using the medical kit, there's, like, you know, a and B ointment for like antibacterial ointment, bandages, tape, you know, some 
gauze. I mean, pretty much everything. Aspirin. Cold sinus flu. Everything. Toenail fungus remover. Xlax. It's like a like a medical kit bag of holding. It'll kind of have everything. All right, so you guys get back down onto the the floor of the warehouse after you guys had searched the warehouse and the colonel or colonel asked you if you you had found uh everything that you needed and you know pretty much what was on the you know the second floor was there anything else uh, useful that uh we're going to be able to you know use Oh, sir, we found food, medical supplies, and headsets that we can all use. Ah, very I'm good. I'm sure you guys already have some, but at least that the civilians can use to keep track with each other. Yeah, that would be a good thing to to pass out. Uh, he, he, you know, uh, as all this is, you know, you guys are, are talking, there's, uh, he does, the corporal does sort of, show a little bit of concern because word around here is that a, a sick girl that was bitten was taken into the office area because uh, you know the corporal has pretty much forbid anyone from going into the the office area excluding Gregory and Joe and 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 you of course and his men but you know there's there's sort of like some some at uh, un, some unease uh, there's some unease tension starting to rise because of the possibility that this girl may be infected you know and and you know the corporal goes on to saying that you know he has a little boy back at home and he says oh, i hope i still have a little boy that's back home so we need to we need to keep her out of harm's way because if if she isn't bitten which you say she isn't I'm hoping that you're being upfront and honest with me. That then we still have to treat this as like a like a flu, and especially with you no know, medical physicians around or doctors' offices, or this could could actually turn into something bad. But well, we should just go quarantine her and a couple of caretakers into an office somewhere. Well, that would probably be about the. The best thing to do, you know, we'll we'll just Put have to put the person on guard and keep the door locked. No, we're gonna have to keep her under guard, both for her protection and you know, possibly for the safety of everything else. It's like I said, I'm just looking, you know, I'm trying to be precautious here. And then you know the uh, the captain does announce to everybody that you know that the office is only going to be used by his men and uh, you know use the radios if you need any any help and. Uh, it's for everyone to start, you know, utilizing them, but only turn them on when we need them because we've only got certain amount, a certain amount of power to run these things. So he he does designate a few of the, uh, a few of the other men, a couple young men, probably in their early twenties, uh, to go up and also keep an eye out on the roof for you know. Any other, you know, survivors possibly trying to enter the premises or, or the the perimeter of the fences, or if there's any kind of of these uh, zombies, as you guys call them. But you do find, I mean, there's you know, aspirin, there's cold medicine, you know. So some of that stuff goes back to back to Samantha. You, know, you guys do get some of that stuff back there, and uh, she she is a a little she is conscious, and then you know she's kind of like in and out. She has a a, a very a very bad a uh, very bad fever. Wow, so many people. Uh, so I'm. Getting Guessing they've moved her to a room at some point. Yeah, she's in one of the one of the executive offices. They've they've kind of built her a bed on top of this nice big executive desk with a uh, you know 
basically couch cushions and stuff and made a made a really nice okay. bed for her. You know, you know she ta- you know she takes some medicine. You know, you find some other some vitamins. And so I mean, there, literally, there's everything. They give her some you know children's vitamins. They give her some uh, they give her some cold medicine. They give her some cough medicine, and uh, she goes back to sleep. You know, a couple. Right. You say there's someone on the roof keeping a lookout. Yeah, there's a there's a pretty much a couple of young men, one on each side, kind of making sure everything's okay. They have radios, uh, and they they also have they have guns as well. They they have rifles. I guess our water supplies is probably coming from bottled water. Oh, there are there are pallets of gallons and two and a half gallons. There's pallets of the five gallon Deer Park, you know, the mm-hmm. water machine bottles. I mean, there there's just, there's a ton of water, a ton of clean water. All right, I want to speak to the whoever's in charge again. That's Is the corporal, that corporal, corporal Hauser, Corporal right. Hauser. Right, if I catch him alone, then game. I'll speak with him. Yes, little Sam, as he as he pats you on top of your head. Sam, you're you're such an experienced young man. Uh, you'd you'd make a good soldier one day. Oh, we'll, ha- we'll have to get you enlisted. You're a good young well, my man. My mom and dad were preppers, so they taught me how to survive. Alone. Oh. So where are you from, Sam? You from around uh, Carolina here? No, I'm from South Georgia. South Georgia, huh? Wow, well, how'd, mm-hmm. how'd you make it up here so quick? Well, getting picked up by a few biker gangs. Whoa. And oh. get to travel a long ways that way. Uh, you made it. You made it. Uh, so I guess your par- your parents did not survive, or or are they uh, are they somewhere possibly? No, I'm afraid they are zombies and no longer exist. Oh my goodness! Well, I'm 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 sorry about that, Sam. And he kind of you know puts his hand on your shoulder, you know, and kind of squeezes it a couple times and says, "Yeah, I've I've got a couple kids back home and." Uh, I'm from North Dakota, so hopefully I'll be able to get back up there to the Dakota-Saskatchewan border and get back up into those mountains and get away from those damn things one day. Well, speaking of which, this place is a nice uh, break, but I'm assuming we are moving forward in some direction. Well, that's a possibility. There, There are a lot of areas out west because the ultimate goal for me is to get back to my family of course you know especially with a military background my my wife she was also in the military which is how we met we had uh, then she left we had children started a family but th- they're they're sort of like you there uh, little sam they've they've been taught the ways of you know the military and survival and 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 I have no doubt that my family is still alive you know we we do have plans for this and uh, as as things were starting to uh, break loose uh, you know I still had ways to communicate with uh, my wife and whatnot so we have a cabin up in the mountains on the Saskatchewan border and and hopefully I'll be able to make it back to them but I told them that I will be back so I, I would recommend you know we go out out west we got to get the higher ground you know, it, it would just make sense to uh, to do so. You know, the the East Coast where we're at now is just too populated. I mean, it, yeah. It, since most people have turned to zombies, it makes sense to go where there are less people. Um, the 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 thing that we have to worry about though is the traveling. I mean, we we need vehicles, and there are vehicles out here. You know, there's you know, and you know, he reaches into his his pocket and pulls out some keys and he says, yeah, there, we, we have plenty of vehicles. So I had one of my men check. They're all gassed up. And there's actually, there's actually a source of gas out there. And uh, my men told me that uh, the source of gas was, was untouched. And he pulled the cars up and there's four or five cars that are ready to go at a moment's notice. 
they're not the prettiest. The they're, there's those tacky Ford Tauruses, but you know, with a with a big <laughs> Win Dixie lug on the side. I mean, it's not used to the uh, not like the the Hummers that I'm used to, but uh, it'll work. And not very armored. No, they aren't. They're just normal Ford Tauruses, unfortunately. Are are any of these um, tractor trailer rigs ready to move out? Um, um, yeah, they, they they would be as well, but I, I would rather have the gas mileage from one of these little Tauruses. You know, one of these rigs following us down the highway could give us supplies for months. Uh, <laughs> that's very true. But how are we going to find the gas for this? You know, we are in, in North Carolina, you know, Especially if we start to head out west to one of the other, I'm sure that we'll eventually start hearing some radio, uh, picking up some radio signals and whatnot on on radio stations, uh, on for where you know exiled people are are, are supposed to go to. Mm -hmm. Well, so. at least the tractor trailer rigs take a different type of fuel than the cars, so it would not hurt to at least bring it as far as we possibly could. Yeah, we could carry the people in there also. Yeah. Instead of using multiple vehicles, but uh, then if we cannot find any more fuel sources, then we're going to have a problem. Also, the rig could carry extra fuel source if we find surplus. Or we could just try to find a fuel truck. Yeah. Hmm. So how are your other people holding up? Well, I've made sure that everyone has medicine and food, and we all have water. We are all packed and ready to move out if something happens. All right. Sounds good. So, uh, old Guile. Guile, what, how, are, how are you doing right now, knowing that your, your family is uh, out there? in Jacksonville somewhere, running from Jacksonville. You have no clue where they could be. I mean, are, are, are you feeling a little antsy as to where, you know, you, you do know that there are some doors around here. I mean, you could try to mm. maybe escape out of here, but you're, you're starting to feel a lot of anxiety. It's sort of like you want to maybe try to try to get the heck out of Dodge, you know what I mean? You know, you're like screw yeah. what this screw what this corporal says. This, this guy, you know, what 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 does this guy know? You know, he 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 hasn't done anything to to save the United States. The the United States is in flames and full of zombies. You know, the 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 government, the the military, they haven't done nothing to uh, protect everyone or anyone for that matter. Hell, they don't even know what's going on. Yeah, I. Oh, Giles, gonna. I gonna sure get do want up. to get my family at some point. Oh. So, what are you doing around the warehouse, there, Guile, with a G? I'm just keeping an eye out for if anyone comes or something, and also in the meantime, looking around. So are you are Guile That's a possible are you gonna be... way to sneak out. Oh, okay. So yeah, Guile, are are you one of those guys that are up on the roof pretty much looking out? No, not on the roof. I'm uh Yeah, I was on the roof and then uh, now I'm checking out the doors and how I can get out yeah. without being noticed. Sure. Yeah, I don't think uh, they would have given this guy a gun and put him on the roof. <laughs> yeah, you can see he that there's. wants to go back. <laughs> yeah, you can see that there's several. There's several doors. There's a a, a big bay door that's kind of blocked. You know, there's been some pallets, but there are several other doors that are not blocked because of you know in case of an emergency. You know the the single door down on the south, and then uh, you know of this. Uh, you also know that you know you've heard rumors of this of this girl that was that was bitten also you know just like just like mrs rose had had heard this you know the the whispers of the other survivors yeah. you know, kind of whispering around to one another 
I mean, you could you, you feel free to go up to the colonel. You can you know, question the colonel. Do you have any questions about you know anything that's going on? You kind of feel like uh, you're kind of left in the dark on some things about some things. Mm. Dave, does my character here or over here or know of uh, Mr. Giles' issues? Uh, well, yeah, whenever the, the, the colonel had went over and talked to him, uh, you had seen him over there talking to him, but there there wasn't anything that's really... There wasn't a whole lot that you could actually hear, though. You know, the, yeah, cause the colonel did want to... Yeah, okay. yeah the, the colonel did go over and, and talk to this guy by himself. The old colonel. Colonel Hauser! <laughs> My character is going to do whatever it can to continue befriending whoever is in power at the moment anyway, so... All right. You know the the rest of the survivors are pretty much spread throughout all the the, so the lower the level. Pet. You know there there's some that uh you know they they appreciate you putting together supply packs for them, you know the medical packs and whatnot. You know a couple of the other supplies uh survivors are going up climbing up the ladders to the second to the second level also. They're also so throwing some things down and you know the other survivors are catching basically just more more supplies like you know deodorant shit like that. Now you just uh, <clears throat> you know this this goes on for about a couple couple hours. You know the sun starts to go down a little bit. Well, yeah, things start to darken up inside of the inside of the warehouse because of you know all of the the windows on the side of all the walls are letting the light in. So as it starts to go darker, you know, the corporal, like you know, the, I'm sorry, the the colonel, you know, see, seeing that there are really no light sources, telling everyone not to to really burn the battery power and whatnot. Everything still seems to be clear for the moment. A couple, you know, a couple shamblers walking by um, portions of the warehouse, but you know, the, there's really nothing that the has attracted. You know, it's just a, sort of like they're just kind of walking by and just aimlessly walking by. And after several hours, uh, there's about 10 or 15 of these other survivors. They actually start to confront the colonel and his men. You know, one, one of these, one of these, uh, one of these guys. Basically, uh, you know, a middle-aged man with a receding hairline. You know, he's starting to get a little loud, and you know, asking if if you're going to take care of the girl, take care of the problem that that you're hiding in the office. You know, and you know, he keeps going on saying that, you know, the little girl's a risk to everyone, and you know, he doesn't he doesn't want to see her get everyone or or actually anyone killed. So that you know the other soldiers are starting to to you know get into this a little bit and they're they're kind of going back and forth you know with the three soldiers and the mob and then the mob goes to about goes to about you know 20 plus of the of the survivors and you know then the, the soldiers are you know starting to yell back and you know telling them to stand down or they're going to shoot you know, they're looking at the guy, so they're 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 kind of like readying their guns. And then, you know, Corporal Hauser, he he starts to hear this. He was he was laying on a couple pallets of like toilet paper, so he was had a nice makeshift bed. He gets up, grabs a sidearm, and fires it a couple times into the roof. <coughs> you know, and it pretty much got everybody's attention. You know, he he tells uh, the survivors to back up, or he's going to command his men to to open fire on him. And he says, "Look, guys, this girl is sick with the flu; she isn't infected, and we are not going to allow anyone in here to kill her in cold blood, point blank. If she was infected, she would have been taken care of before she even came in here. So now, you know, this this uh." 
and you're part of this mob uh, dial with a G. So you're kind of going, yeah, yeah, <laughs> get a 